So, you know, some gal will have, she'll have the, the, the age spots here, and she'll have the, the milia under her eye, and, and the sebaceous hyperplasia. That's a chronic mm -hmm. condition that's well, going on with people. Well, I have a customer, people. she's just dying. Ooh. <laughs> she's loaded. <laughs> They're great. This is phenomenal. What did you do before? You don't have to do as many extractions with this device. Well, you're not peeling so much to try exactly. to get everything down exactly. where you can get it out. The other wonderful thing about this is because the probes are very tiny, you're very precise and you're not causing a lot of peripheral cell damage. So you're really isolating the lesion. Most women are wonderful as far as their tolerance. Mm -hmm. We don't use topicals. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, if I have a bunch of skin tags, we might put some topicals on. But typically, women can handle this. So, you know, I'm doing the right uh, frontal area and then I go to the left and then I do the temporal on the right and then the cheeks and mm -hmm. obvious then I go to the uh, chin mm -hmm. and finally finish up with the nose for instance that's how my little ge geography works. Well, I was kind of ingrained in me because I started with Dermalogica and I learned all the face mapping and so I'm just right, oh kind sure of you've got your own way. yeah it's awesome we, we set people up in practice that have no or marginal skin experience so we have to you know go through all that for them mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> remember we're only treating the epidermis so that technique will be critical and you want to give your clients some break you'll you'll you might tap like on a brown spot you might tap three times and then just pull off I still have my tissue maintained my mm -hmm. my traction and then I go back to work you can notice their body language if they're tearing etc mm -hmm. you know so that's important. Be considerate, obviously you are, uh, and work methodically. You know, get into a certain area and a, and a protocol and work that way constantly on every client. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, the beauty of this treatment, after you're done, um, the patient's going to be red. There's going to be erythema. There's going to be, there's no crust forming at least you know, for the first 24 to 36 hours. That's when the crust is going to form. Mm -hmm. So you're going to use all you have to use on the client post-treatment is a moisturizer sunscreen. Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome. No antibiotics, no AAA, no topical stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, you can use aloe as a calming. We want to calm mm -hmm. the skin down. So our Vivant <coughs> product we use has a, um, has a makeup where it has the sunscreen, a 15 or a 30. We like 30 now. Mm -hmm. Um, now, if you have a client at night and you're doing her at, say, 5 o'clock, just moisturize. Right. Now, I have a product called Calming Skin Gel that has a 1% um, uh, hydrocodors of cortisone. That's fine. Yes or no? Yeah. I would say yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. I've had some of my nurse clients, they use mm -hmm. a, a, like an over-the-counter, a 1% mm -hmm. hydrocortisone yeah. cream. Mm -hmm. But um, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're familiar, let's just go over the uh, skin... Fitzpatrick skin scale for a minute. Mm -hmm. If you're Dutch Irish, you're like a one, you know, you're lily white. Mm -hmm. the, it's ironically, those folks are going to be the ones that have the least impact, the least concern for us as far as remelanizing. Mm -hmm. So as you move up the skin, the Fitzpatrick skin scale it goes from like one to six. So say one would be like an Irish, real almost uh, you know like a red-headed Irish ivory. gal ivory. yeah ivory Nicole to, Kidman. to like to like <laughs> yes. a, say an African-American say a six like Whoopi Goldberg mm -hmm. the only difference you're going to treat the same all the skin levels are treated the same the techniques mm -hmm. the same and all it's just the post directions and the educational explanation of how they heal mm -hmm. because think of it the the more pigment they have the more time it's going to take to re-melanize okay. So the healing, uh, you know, you've got the scab forming, or the crust we call it, mm -hmm. 36 hours, right? Okay. Then, within the first 10 days, the, the crust will slough, you're moisturizing, you're letting that stuff come together and heal, mm -hmm. and then you're basically going to, you're fine, if mm -hmm. you're our color. Mm -hmm. But if you're a little bit darker, like we do the dorsum of the hand and the forearm, because mm -hmm. that's where women, you know, they get their age spots, they get exposed here. Mm -hmm. So this area might take, it might take some, uh, like a Hispanic gal that's mm -hmm. fairly dark. It might take her two months, might take her three months. Don't you find two older women, like I have one gal that I did, and she's in her 70s, and uh, 30 days later, she kind of felt like she still wasn't real healed. 
in the nasal area. Well, at that age, you yeah. know, their their parchment type skin and their healing capabilities are diminished. And so was yeah, this, was this the lamp pro? Mm -hmm. You're talking yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But normally the skin healing cycle is 30 days. So you never want to retreat a, a spot that you've done. you got to give it at least 30 days and sometimes longer. Okay. But now these people that are good need to remelanize longer, they've healed. There's no crust. Everything's together. But they may be a little pink. They may be a little, they may be a little That's hyper. That's what her thing was. She yeah. says, I'm to, still pink, pink here. And I said, you're going to take a little longer because mm -hmm. of the age bracket that you're in. Exactly. The skin just going to take a little longer. So yeah. give it another 30 days. So we've got 60 days out. Then come and talk to me. That's good because we'll that's see. good common sense. You know, you get these gals that are, you know, octogenarians or whatever. They're going to take a little longer to heal on everything. Mm -hmm. um, we don't really like to treat brittle diabetics either. Mm -hmm. I, you know. Now, someone that's a type 2 onset, yeah. uh, your face heals remarkably well. Mm -hmm. We started out, we did a little, some vascularities on the lower extremities. But because of the venous action and the, and the valves and everything, mm -hmm. we don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Now, we'll do things on the back. We'll mm -hmm. do age spots. We'll do uh, other things. The uh, What's the crusty? Severate. Yeah, the severate keratosis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, that's about it. So you'll have people call you once in a while and say, Sandy, I'm not healing right. And you just, you know, yeah. as long as your technique was good. And that's why the malpractice is low on this, because we're only working in that epidermis. Well, I feel like I have a little bit of an ace in the hole with training with Diet because I did a, a private session with her for a week. Mm -hmm. And so I was trained pretty heavily on puncturing the skin, basically. <laughs> she put the fear of God into me, so... <laughs> <laughs> so and and you know when you do that much, I did in a matter of um, about 24 months. I did 400 people. Wow! And so I was in the skin yeah. a lot, and you're going to come up against everything Absolutely. with that stuff. So awesome. that that doesn't scare me much anymore. No, and the only time we're really allowed to go into the skin mm -hmm. is when we enter a pore. Pore. Okay. And that's not real deep. You'll 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 know where yeah. you want to be. I'm really interested to see that. I had not seen that technique, and I it's awesome. watched you several times. And I'm like, I gotta Plot see this. Clogged pores and large pores. Mm -hmm. But when a client walks through your door, like this young lady here, we know. How old are you? 25. Yeah. 30. She. I just totally lied to you. I'm gonna be 25 today. <laughs> it's really? it's your birthday? birthday. No. <laughs> <laughs> I could turn five years today. <laughs> That's no idea. <laughs> what you are engrossed. <laughs> what is she gonna have? Yeah. <laughs> She's not gonna have all this these ninety percent of these lesions or minor irregularities are from UV damage. Mm -hmm. She's not gonna have that. She hasn't accumulated or accrued all that damage. But she could have clogged or enlarged pores. She could have sebaceous hyperplasia. Mm -hmm. She could even have milia. Mm -hmm. But she's not gonna have, you know. She's not going to have those big brown spots and et cetera. Right. We like to tell people too, our trainees, that I basically wouldn't treat an age spot bigger than my nail. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got one coming in this afternoon. I think she's my first one up. You, um, you could it's always. It's going to be very interesting with her. You could always do a spot test too. Yeah. I just did a training for a gal, and you know. I, I would do it because I've been doing this for a right. long time, but I would never recommend that to a new practitioner because mm -hmm. you're just causing too much damage. Yeah, and too much going on. Yeah, so you could do a little spot test if you like. Could you, could you do something like if the lesion was large like that, do it in two phases where you treated half of it and exactly. then you came in after it had healed and treated the other half? Absolutely, so and, and you know deal. what you'll find when you look at those big brown spots under mm -hmm. the light, under just your magnifying light, mm -hmm. you're going to see when you stretch it, it's variegated. It's not a complete circular brown spot. When you yes. spread it out, you'll see areas of white in between. Okay. Don't treat those. You'll treat just the little like clover okay. leaves that you see. Cool. Only the pigmented yeah. area. Mm -hmm. right. But even better, a better approach to that mm -hmm. would be to treat an area the like a little bit bigger than a pinhead and let it heal up and see mm -hmm. how then see you can go ahead and then yeah no then you'd know a little Absolutely. bit more how she's got, how this person's gonna mm -hmm. react because if you treated half of it i would because i'm you know if i recognized it mm -hmm. but what makes our skin light so cool it uses refractive and polarized light so the com component of those two um here it is 
what it allows you to do is this the light is bounced back off the skin so you're actually looking you're almost able to see everything under the little mm -hmm. minor regularity saw that. so like your moles you'll see hair you'll see its own little blood supply not always but moles don't look like clear moles don't look like anything on the sheet mm -hmm. they're not red they're not brown they're mm -hmm. raised but mm -hmm. they're not you know um, actinic keratosis is you a common condition right yeah how long have you had that little bump on your nose, for instance? Oh, I've had that all my life. That's a mole. So you stay away from that. Because mm -hmm. they can have potentially, potentially have uh, cells that might, mm -hmm. you know, Make, you don't want to go there. become yeah. precancerous, right? Exactly. Um, everything to me, like we, we see Obama or the fellow who's in Shawshank Redemption. The, mm -hmm. the, oh, yeah. He's got that little nest of these little fibromas mm -hmm. on his face, okay? So. A lot of times you'll see these things come in groups. Cherry angiomas are another classic. The little blood dots. Mm -hmm. They are so fun because they just go. Off lots of those. Yeah. And how do you oh, take good. them off? With this? With the lamp yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, good. She's yeah. Good. yeah. way ahead you of should I had the lamp for, I mean, for six months. Okay. And then I cried big crocodile tears when she took it away. And I thought, well, I'll fix that. I'm just going to get my own. <laughs> <laughs> my biggest thing for estheticians tell me, Mike, I really don't have anything that's that great for three-dimensional irregularities, you mm -hmm. know? They've got to do all kinds of weird stuff, but, mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of gals that are bleaching age spots. These are going to, these age spots are 90% of the time mm -hmm. are gone in one, one treatment. Mm -hmm. So that's phenomenal. Well, I have a cool treatment that I'm interested in trying with this machine as I do a hand and arm treatment, and I use a, a level three pumpkin pro, uh, I use 25% alpha, alpha hydroxy, clean mm -hmm. the area, dry it, use melanin suppressant, a pro pumpkin, level 3, uh, mid to deep, peel, wrap 10 minutes, take it off, and dry everything, and then come in microderm. And then I'm thinking, like, for those stubborn mm -hmm. spots, could you, you come back in? And you won't have to do up? that anymore. You know what I might do first? I might, if I saw the lady, I might say, let's do your brown spots. Whatever residual is left, mm -hmm. then I have another treatment that okay. will, because then that will clean it all up and, mm -hmm. and sub make the skin nice and supple after treatment. At least maybe, uh, you know, four weeks after the treatment, okay. maybe, maybe That's a good five idea. weeks. That's why I wanted to mm -hmm. know how to incorporate some of the things I'm already doing into yeah. expanding. Because I'm, I'm a great one. I'm constantly... Creating Thank you. something. Sure. Yeah. Right. A new so recipe cool. for new recipe skin. for this. What can I do for this? We hate to tell you this isn't good. <laughs> when I do hands and arms, here's the thing too, going to this hands and arms. And and people that have diffuse brown, mm -hmm. we used to operate a laser. We did photofacials. Mm -hmm. They had just brown everywhere. Mm -hmm. When you're treating a hand and a forearm, you're basically going to take away the spots that draw your attention. Mm -hmm. If they have 50 spots on their arm, you're going to take the, just the largest, most obvious spots. Right. You don't have to hit all 50. Yeah. It really applies to the decollete. Okay. Because if you have a couple, if you get rid of them, it's like the gal's more homogenous. That's the way I look at mm -hmm. it. Exactly. And, it, and the way the Skin Classic can fit into most of your treatments is do that first. When your client so, comes in the door, uh, yeah. because I needed like, to know how that was going to fit. Yeah. Do that first. Definitely. Because you know why you want to clean up all their junk. Mm -hmm. Get rid of all the very obvious things. Then when they come back the next month, you may decide, well, you know, Mrs. Jones, uh, I think a peel peels are the best way for us to mm -hmm. go about the, the texturizing of your skin. Mm -hmm. So then you can incorporate something else. But I would always start with this first to clean it all up first, get rid of all that, mm -hmm. and then start with another procedure, whether, okay. you know, peels, rollers, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when you're treating blood vessels, for instance, in the nasolabial area or in the cheek bowl, you're going to, you'll see sebum, because sebum is in every mm -hmm. pore. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a gland, right? Then the sebum is excreted. So if you look at the anatomy of a pore, it's real narrow at the top, and that's why we get clogged pores. But what will happen is the sebum will be drawn up to the tip of your probe mm -hmm. because it's like sizzle. You know, it just draws that, mm -hmm. that, you know, if you put that on a blackhead and just touch it, a lot of times it'll just take that dirt and the sebum and it'll just draw it right out of that pore. So what will happen is you'll have to, you take your probe in a horizontal plane and you just pull that off with your glove, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, and get back to work. Video. Now, if someone has, we're going to do hands and arms and they have a nest of age spots here and here, I'm only going to look at the largest ones or the ones that don't look 
like the other ones, for instance. I, I don't have to look at a hundred of these things because mm -hmm. I already know she's 60 years old. She's had sun exposure. So I'm going to get in there and look at two or three. Mm -hmm. But when you see a, a mole or something that has its own blood supply, it's really cool. Mm -hmm. You see that little nest, cherry angioma, for instance, mm -hmm. which is, you know, a classic thing that we find on gals. That only is like a, a two-touch possible thing and it's gone. Yeah. Well, there, you, know, you know, you yeah. know. Do you have any, well what would be your most uh, important questions regarding the technique or whatever? Tell me how you treat a brown spot. What's your technique? Um, what I was tr uh, trained on was, you know, working in um, a tapping kind of circular motion. Okay. Is that right? There was a technique, and Dr. Lamb did teach that at one mm -hmm. time, but went to this technique okay. where he would circle. He would, the little brown spot, he'd take yeah. a little probe and just kind of circle it. Yeah. But yeah. we've gotten out of that for Because a look, the probe's on the skin too long. Here I am, okay. perpendicular. I've got a good stretch. stretch this, right. is, this is not a, this is a separated cartosis. Well, Let's pretend whatever. it's a flat it's a brown. brown spot, right? So we used to do, whoop, whoop, yep. like yep. that, okay? That's how I we're, we're doing this now. We're just tap, 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 tap. tap. Tap, tap, and you'll I like see that, that a lot better. it's safer. It's well, yeah, because so I watched it on the video and I went, yeah. oh, that's a better idea, better racehorse. Less, yeah, a little less intrusive on the skin, and it actually perforates a little bit more so that mm -hmm. you've got a lot more um, nutrients that can get into the skin. Sometimes when you do that, it's all like a little, the, the top of it is, is the same texture. You know, yeah. you can't get Let me just through. check and see if yeah. 130 is here. 